Hello everyone, welcome to the Justin and Ron Show, Corona Edition Week 3. I um, hope everyone's still having a really great uh, Coronacation. I know I've reached out to a few kids at our church and I've noticed that you guys are really starting to get bored. Um, before we get started on today's lesson, um, Ron and I have a few questions for each other to kind of, you know, break the ice. Hey Justin, I got a question for you. If you had to choose, pants made of rubber or pants made of leather? I would have to choose rubber pants because that way I could just bounce right back up if I fell. Heat vision or the ability to turn into a dog? Dude, if I could be a dog, I would totally be a dog. Here's a good one. Would you rather be Iron Man or Spider-Man? What kind of question is that? Genius, billionaire, philanthropist. All right, guys, so as we talked about last week, this week we're gonna talk about Holy Week. But before I get started, I'd like to kind of open up with a, with a word of prayer. Dear God, I just, I just pray that you're, you're there with everyone going through this uh, pandemic going on right now, for all the families that lost a loved one, for uh, a good friend of Ron and I's that just uh, lost his battle to cancer, that you really be with his family through through all of this and that you know that everyone watching this video that they really get something out of it in your name we pray amen all right so holy week so as you guys know next sunday is easter sunday and uh the week before starting with today is holy week and today is actually called palm sunday it's gonna be Palm Sunday, you know, you mean like palm on my hand, you know, but Palm Sunday is actually celebrating a part in the Bible where Jesus returned to Jerusalem and it's in Matthew, got my Bible, Matthew chapter 21, talks about it in most of the chapter. It's when he, uh, when he, when he came back to Jerusalem, he was on a donkey and uh, everyone that knew he was coming were laying down palm branches. And uh, that kind of symbolized that, you know, Jesus was, was the king. They were treating him like he was entering as a king. And uh, it says later on in the chapter that, uh, you know, they said, that they said, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And it's just, it's just really, I don't know, ironic. I don't know if that's the right word to say, the, of uh, like how they're treating him when he's coming in. And we'll be getting to that a little bit later. Um, yeah, uh, Palm Sunday is just symbolizing, you know, when they were laying down the palms for him because they were treating him like he was, like he was royalty. And I actually, one second. I actually have one. So I know our church has done it in the past. I know uh, growing up Catholic um, that we were given these all the time and my family, along with many others, would kind of put them up in their in their house. I'd put it up, you know, to kind of symbolize, hey, so you wouldn't forget, you know, what Palm Sunday is all about. All right, now, Fast forwarding, a little bit later in the week, you know, he's Jesus hanging out with his homeboys, and uh, and then we take it to pretty much the Last Supper, where Ron's going to talk more about that, but I'm going to talk about what happened a little bit before um, the Last Supper, was Jesus, you know, was in his room with all his boys, and, uh, you know, he grabs a, grabs a cloth and a uh, bucket of water. And he comes up to his, uh, I think it was Peter, don't, don't quote me. And he, uh, um, grabs it and he is about to try washing his feet. And he was like, no, 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 you know, I'm, you know, you don't need to wash my feet. You know, you're, you're Jesus, you know, you're the, you're the son of God. I should be washing your feet. And, um, 
Sorry for the uh, brief pause. I uh, my phone fell. Um, so again, talking about uh, the washing of the feet. You know, Jesus said, or uh, Peter was saying, you know, why uh, why do you need to wash my feet? And then Jesus answered, and this is in uh, John uh, chapter thirteen. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me, or part with me. Then uh, Peter said, uh, "Not not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well." You know, like you know, give me give me a whole shower. Then at that point, you know, um, and then Jesus said, "Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet; their whole body is clean. For you are clean, though not every one of you." Which uh, he knew that someone was going to betray him, and again, uh, Ron will be talking uh, more about that. Um, and not to get super into it, but he, uh, the, the basic point of, uh, Jesus washing of the feet there was to show that even though, you know, who he was, he still was able to get down and, you know, wash their feet. And back then, you know, they just had sandals, it was sandy, you know, they didn't have this fancy, you know, body wash made their feet smell nice you know it was it was it, their, their feet were nasty back then um but he showed you know that he was able he was showing a whole bunch of humility there and um he was trying to tell his disciples you know it doesn't matter you know who's the best teacher or you know who gets the most people it's it's more about you know being with the people and i think that was the uh biggest point that uh, he was trying to make there when he was washing his disciples feet all right that's uh all i got for a thousand foot view on um palm sunday and uh you know washing of the feet um it's uh, uh all up to you ron hey guys welcome to the barn chuck and i are sitting here uh chilling uh we are trying to stay s extremely socially distanced follow all the rules Trying to make sure that we are safe and that everyone around us is safe. So, uh, wanted to touch base with you. Thank you, Justin, for the great intro. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, the Lord or the Last Supper. Uh, I like talking about the Last Supper. It's one of my uh, one of my favorite uh, things, and I know we've talked about it a little bit recently uh, in class. Uh, so, for those of you that are, this is a little bit of a refresher. Um, we'll kind of get into that, but first things first, uh, I wanted to start out by looking straight to the word. Uh, this is found in, uh, Luke chapter 22. Um, and you can read the whole thing in 22. It also gets into when Jesus is arrested, uh, in chapter 22 as well. But, uh, in the story of the last supper, uh, Jesus tells them where to go. Uh, and, and what to do and how to get it, uh, you know, where this place, like who to find a person is going to actually, it's kind of miraculous the way he says it. He goes, hey, you know, you go follow, find this guy carrying this jar of water and uh, tell him this and he will give you a room. So it works out pretty cool. Um, and then after it's prepared, uh, Jesus sits down with them and he flat out opens it up. And I like this uh, right in uh, verse uh, 15 uh, of Luke 22 uh, he says I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer so Jesus is looking forward to this dinner with these guys uh, and this is a ceremonial uh, meal for them uh, this goes dates way back to do you guys remember when we talked about Moses and we talked about all the plagues uh, and the final plague was uh, the death of the firstborn Egyptian sons uh, so what happened was uh, the Israelites put blood on their door and the angel would pass over that house and not do uh, and not kill the firstborn son so this is very symbolic uh, of the way that Christ is getting ready to, to be murdered uh, is what it really boils down to. And he knows that. 
So he's sitting here, and he knows this is going to be the last meal he's going to have with the, these guys for a while. He knows that this is going to be, he even says, you know, in verse 16, For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. So he even says, hey, guys, this is the last time I'm going to do this. Uh, and then it's kind of interesting reading through Luke. All of the uh, disciples, they kind of start arguing about who's going to be the first. Hey, who's going to be the most important? Um, there's a little bit of a conversation that is almost skipped over, and nobody even seems to notice, where he calls out Judas and says, Hey, you know, you're going to betray me. Go do what you've got to do. Um, and he points it out to everyone, but they don't even seem to notice. But they keep going back and forth talking about who's going to be the greatest and who's going to be the worst. And Jesus keeps telling them over and over again, says, you guys don't get it. The people that are going to be the greatest in my kingdom are going to be the ones who are the least, the servants. And uh, he shows them that by washing the feet of the disciples. And he shows them that by um, the way he's treating them. And he keeps having these conversations. He's, and, and he flat out says, the one who serves is going to be the greatest. So I want you guys to think about that. There's a couple of things that's being said in this story uh, that I wanted to talk to you guys about. One, Chuck and I were talking about this, and uh, we miss you guys. If I would have known that the last class that we had uh, was going to be the last class for a while, uh, how would I have done things differently? How would you guys have done things differently? We didn't know. Um, we didn't know that we were going to be having our last youth group when we did for a while. Uh, so things have obviously changed with uh, our world for the time being. And we're on pause for some stuff. But uh, that being said, I did want you guys to know that I do miss you guys. Uh, Justin and I were talking about it. Um, I got a chance to go to uh, Nate's funeral. Um, which is one of our friends, and, and I want you guys to make sure you're praying for uh, the entire family. Uh, Bryce has been in our class before. He's, he's one of our guys. So we want to make sure that uh, as you guys are going through and, and talking to God, make sure you raise that family up into your prayers. Um, but let's think about ways that we can be servants. Let's think about ways that we can follow Christ lead in our day-to-day -day life and there's a lot of stuff right now where you guys have the opportunity to put yourself in a different situation a servant's position uh, if you're spending a lot of time with your siblings I know that can be taxing I know that can be difficult um, try to build in time uh, try to say hey how can I be a good sibling um, but think about that Jesus flat out tells us says hey you know, if you want to be the greatest in kingdom of heaven, you got to be the best servant. Uh, and that doesn't mean prideful at all. That means just being, hey, what can I do? How can I, how can I express the love of Christ in my day-to-day -day life? And a lot of that is by actions. Now, the next step after the Last Supper, uh, Jesus goes on the mountain and prays. Uh, Judas goes and he has to go uh, do his dirty work, so to speak. So after that, uh, we get into, hey, simmer down there, buddy. Uh, after that, we get into Jesus's death, uh, the arrest, the trial. Uh, so we're going to step into that a little bit next week, and we're going to try to do it in a short period of time because, unfortunately, we have a very limited amount of time that we can actually uh, record for. So, uh, but... You guys, I love you guys. We miss you guys. I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, and I'm hoping to, to get to see you guys on our Zoom meetups that we're starting to work on. So, without... Say up, guys. It's about time for a couple of dad jokes. Justin, knock, knock. Who's there? Cash. Cash who? I knew you were a nut. How did the ball of yarn get a job at the gas station? She pulled some strings. Ha <laughs> ha.